Resident Evil 2 is just about here, and with it comes a game that can be satisfying but challenging, especially if you're new to the series. So here are 10 things you should know before starting a new game in Resident Evil 2. Now keep in mind, this is spoiler free as possible, but I still recommend going in completely blind. It's just way more enjoyable when you're surprised. But if you're too scared for that, we got you covered here. Let's get started off with number 10. A lot of this stuff is gonna be about preservation and resource management, and a big thing I gotta say is know your herbs. You should be somewhat familiar with how this works if you've played at least Resident Evil 7, but I really wanna stress that consuming a single green herb by itself to heal yourself isn't really worth it unless you're desperate. Heal when you're at a dangerous level and use a more effective herb combination always. As far as I'm concerned, you should always combine an herb in some way before consuming it. Whether it's doubling up with two green herbs or bolstering your green herb with a red herb to have a lot of health or later on getting crazy and mixing a blue and red to protect you from poisonous enemies, uh, take the herb stuff seriously if you want to live. Next at number nine, a beginner tip. This might sound dumb, but zombies aren't always dead. They may go down, but newcomers might be surprised to see that they get back up again. You don't want to get caught by surprise. Listen, unless you seriously freaking maim them with a headshot or an explosion or just a lot of bullets, they're going to get back up. So be prepared for that. Poke them with a knife if you have one to see if they're still alive. Uh, avoid stepping directly on them, and also just keep moving anyway. That's your best bet. Next at number eight, Mr. X pursues you throughout the game. It was shown in the trailers. It's common knowledge by now. We've called him Mr. X since we were kids, but he's not technically called that, I know. But I, I digress. My point is here, uh, he will come up to get in the way of whatever you got going on fairly often in the game, and you just need to know that he's not worth the ammo you'd potentially waste on him. If you use enough ammo to down him, he really only goes down and stops moving for like 10 to 15 seconds. Very sparingly, you might have no choice but to take him down for a minute, but usually you can just lead him away from wherever you are and come back in a bit and be okay. Basically, just treat him like a big dumb zombie. Don't be scared, he's not as smart as you think. But he can catch you by surprise, so be careful. Next at number seven, it's one of the core pillars of the game. There's a lot of puzzles in Resident Evil 2. Some are environmental, some have hidden stuff, some require you to just really use your brain, but either way, you might eventually find yourself stuck, wandering around the police station, not sure exactly how to progress forward, where to go, what to unlock, what to do. Maybe you're feeling kind of aimless. Well, here's what I always say. Use the examine option on every weird item in your inventory. Even some of the less suspect ones, look, stuff that looks like it has one purpose, Use the examine option. It lets you spin the item around and check and look for hidden secrets that might actually help you progress. More than once, I didn't realize something and I totally wanted to kick myself in the ass. So I'm telling you now, check everything. Next at number six, hey, look, you don't have to pick everything up all at once. Relax, there's a good chance you're gonna be back around to an area more than once, and grabbing an item you're not gonna use until later on might just fill up your inventory unnecessarily when eventually you find a crucial box of bullets or something that you really need. Space is limited. Just get used to going on supply runs, you know, running back to a safe room and a deposit box to drop stuff off and head back out for more stuff. It's normal. Also, uh, don't worry about forgetting where stuff is either. A lot of items on normal mode are marked on your map once you see them, so you can always look back on your map and see where you want to head and what exactly you want to grab. The map is totally your friend. Plan your route. At number five, speaking of planning your route, once you get used to your environments, learn to bait and dodge zombies. Get comfortable, know where they are. The game will always surprise you here and there, but for the most part, know your safe zones and stuff and know how to weave in and out of zombies. Don't waste any bullets on them either. They'll always be unpredictable, but you can lure them into more open areas where you can then run around them and then completely avoid them. If there's an area where you feel you need to get rid of them, totally do it, you know, if that's what you want, uh, but you're gonna want some of those bullets for harder stuff later on. And if one is in your way, I say, give them one or two pops to the head with a gun to like stun them for a sec and then keep running past them. Next at number four, uh, just a quickie tip for newcomers. Who'd you choose to start the game as? Uh, Leon, Claire? Well, you're gonna complete their campaign and then you're gonna think you're done. Well, you're not. There's way more to see. While there are some parallels, there are also plenty of interesting differences between the two playthroughs. Once you're done, you can play through the other character in the unlocked second run mode. And then from there, you can just keep going and keep replaying as long as you want with different difficulties and stuff like that. It's a Resident Evil game, so you need to play through it a few times to really see everything. And really, that's half the fun of it all. But next at number three, 
Use those boards. Uh, they are your friend. It seems like you get a lot of them, but it also seems like they might be useless. Well, they're not. There are still more open windows than there are boards, but using them strategically is key. My recommendation, use as many as you can for more higher traffic areas that you find yourself running back and forth through a lot, like one of the main halls, maybe near a safe room. You're gonna be running back and forth to that safe room a lot. I, like I said earlier, if you're doing supply runs and stuff. So you might as well make your life easier and cover them windows. Now, next at number two, on normal difficulty, you can save as often as you want, as long as you can find a typewriter. And on harder difficulty, it works the old fashioned way where you have to have ink ribbons to save. So if you're playing on normal, and if you can, create multiple save files for a few reasons. One, you might go on a supply run and then something goes wrong and you totally screw yourself and end up wasting valuable resources that you can't get back. In that case, you should save scum it if you want to and get that stuff back if you're that type of player. Maybe you wanna challenge yourself, I don't know. Also, small bonus too, it helps too if you miss something way, way back where you can't return, or if you just wanna replay a cool sequence, I don't know. It's good to practice those boss battles because you're gonna be playing through them again later on, right? Now, number one, speaking of boss battles and speaking of difficulty, if you're stuck on a boss with practically nothing at all, keep trying. It's likely bound to happen, but I gotta beg that you stick with it. Keep hitting restart. Don't bump it down to assist mode when the game prompts you to, and just try and make it through with that, say, one flashbang and five bullets you have left. It might seem impossible, but the game does seem to adapt its difficulty depending on your resources, and although it will still be extremely challenging, you can still technically win, and it's satisfying as hell, just like it has been in any other Resident Evil game. I still remember finishing Resident Evil 5 with like two bullets and a knife. It's totally worth it, and like I said, it's so damn satisfying, and the game is as a whole. Like I said, these are real basic tips for beginners. Resident Evil is pretty cut and dry, but hopefully if you needed tips, this can help you and maybe alleviate some of your fears going into Resident Evil 2. If you got any other tips for new players, maybe you're an old school fan or a hardcore player, let us know down in the comments, share with players. If you enjoyed this video though, clicking the like button helps us out a ton. We really appreciate it. And if you're new, you should consider subscribing and hitting that notification bell because we put out videos every single day. But as always, thanks for watching and we'll see you guys next time.